Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 11, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was really good. I really liked it. It wasn't as strong as perhaps episode 10, but it was still pretty good. And there were so many scenes that I loved in this episode. And yeah, so it was a very good episode. So let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. There was obviously a few things that was like meh on, but you know, that happens most of the time on a lot of these shows and you know, films as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and break it down bit by bit, talking about everything that happened in the episode and everything that could or does have further implications for what's to come. Okay, so at the start of the episode, Cicada returns, and the Doctor, I have no idea what her name is, I really don't remember, but I don't think it's that important. Essentially, she's working with him, she's supplying him all this food and medicine, and whatever he needs, because he's a wanted man now, Cicada is wanted, so that must be said. And so, she apparently knows someone, and we later find out it's someone in CCPD who got taken over by a metahuman using metatech, and he was scared and, you know, he's, you know, against metahumans now, and so that's his storyline, like, he was barely in it, so, you know, we really don't need to talk about that. But anyway, so Cicada at the start of the episode kills three people, he kills three metas, and in fact one of the metas actually was played by the Savitar actor, that I found out from Paige, I had no idea, but you know, he was massive, he was humongous compared to, I think his name was Norvok, who was Amunet Black's villain, like Psychic, last season, and we'll talk about him in a sec, but yeah, I do believe that's the Savitar actor who was under the suit, it wasn't Grant this whole time because, you know, it's literally kind of just action scenes and a few actions and is the voice overlay that really counts for Savitar. So that was interesting, I really liked seeing him. And so, moving on to the interesting part of the episode, this had me really intrigued and really hooked throughout the episode. So Sherlock Wells, again, he experimented and he went further on with his investigations, trying to find out why Nora is hiding the context behind her messages, why the timeline is malleable, that's still the only thing that he's been able to decode so far, but he knows she's trying to hide something because otherwise she would just write the journal in English, she would just write it normally. So he knows this, he suspects it, and he, as he says, he always pursues a different avenue, and throughout the episode we get to see him spying on Laura, he goes to Nora at the end, and he's confronted by Iris because Iris sees her actually talking to Sherlock and it seems like Sherlock is trying to do his detective work on her and Iris suspects this and she has a go at him and she believes Nora is truly innocent and as the spectator we know Iris is wrong and we know that Sherlock's right because we've seen the future scenes no matter if she's a villain or not, whether she turns out to actually be bad or if she stays good, she's working with the Reverse Flash, she has stuff to hide, so Sherlock is right here, and so Sherlock asks about going to the future, going to the Flash Museum himself rather than just looking at, you know, archives, because at the end of last episode we know that he was in the Gideon Room and he found out that all Nora Allen's records were actually deleted, most likely by Nora, so, what is she hiding, and that's what he wants to find out, and next episode, we're going to the Flash Museum, we'll break that trailer down later today, and so he wants to go there, he wants to go to the Speed Force, he wants to go to the future, obviously, from the outside, you can see, mm, that's a bit sketchy, so you can understand Iris's scepticism and her undying love for Nora, who is supposedly her daughter, I, ju I do believe she's the real Nora, but again, she's got a shady side to her. So that was entirely intriguing. And then later in the episode, as you can tell, I'm not going through this chronologically, I'm just going to point to point to point. And Sherlock uses handwriting analysis to find out that in fact, the journal is written by two people and we know 
it's the reverse slash we know it's Eobard Thorn from the future because we've seen those scenes and there is a mastermind as he said so he's going to be looking to find out who this mastermind is behind why she's looking into this why she's writing all this stuff down to do with the timeline being malleable why does she need to know that what's going on and so he's going to figure it out and in that same scene at the end we see a mirrored look where the camera focuses in on Sherlock's face is a reflection of himself and what's a reflection of himself? Eobard Thorne, played by Tom Kavanagh, you know, using that Harrison Wells face. So again, that's just massive symbolism and massive foreshadowing. So Sherlock is getting really close. He knows she's working with someone and there's a mastermind behind it, but who is it? I'm sure they're going to find out, you know, a little bit more information next episode because the trailer definitely hints that and we'll break that down later today as I said. Otherwise in the episode, apart from that amazing Sherlock and Nora stuff, we see that Nora's spine is absolutely brutally damaged and destroyed by Cicada as he like sort of, you know, breaks everything and her back is broken essentially. And so at first her speed healing's not working, she's got the brace on her and she's unable to move. You know, that is a parallel to what happened to Barry in season two. And so that was a nice parallel, but Throughout the episode, she's sort of out of it until the end because her speed healing comes back because um, the dark matter has gone out of her system. And so by the end, she's able to walk again and she is able to stop Barry from actually killing Cicada. So let's go on to talk about the metas and what's going on. So we get Peekaboo returning, we get to see Norvak returning. Again, I'm not the biggest fans of these just one time characters. Like, I don't really like Norvark, he was alright in this episode, but I feel like the actor's, you know, overemphasizing. he's like, sort of strolling around and everything, and it's a bit annoying, because I think he's overacting. And Peekaboo, she's alright, you know, nothing too special, we've seen her loads of times, honestly. And so, these other metas, nothing special at all, but that's probably, like, the only downside of the episode. Also, Cicada... They let him go again. Like, I actually like Cicada a lot, but it's kind of a bit repetitive, the fact that he flies out into the ceiling or he flies into the air, like, every single time. I'm just kind of a bit bored of that. I think they need to advance from just them having a fight and him running away. But apart from that, the fight scenes were really good in this episode. We had Cicada versus Barry at the start, and then Cicada goes away, and then Killer Frost versus Cicada was awesome and seeing Killer Frost actually progress and seeing that relationship with Caitlyn and then finally ending up in that fight scene with her versus Cicada, I loved that fight scene, that was probably one of my favourite moments in the episode. It was just such a joy to see that and I thought it was great and so Barry is extremely overpowered, you can see the lightning surge inside of him, that energy, that power and he's about to kill Cicada and like I mentioned before, Nora is able to stop him, like he would have actually killed him, he would have full on obliterated him, which we kind of wanted, right? But, you know, he's a hero, he can't do that. So that was really, really amazing, I really like the fight scenes in this episode. And so, as we head towards the end of the episode, Barry, Iris and Nora together, and you know, it's just them, you know, recouping and... Obviously, it's really kind of just foreshadowing the breakup that's gonna happen when Nora actually is revealed to be working with Thorn because I'm sorry, but Barry and Iris, if they ever forgive her, even like two years or something, that's crazy because the person that killed Barry's mum and caused them so much pain, imagine you found out your daughter or your son or anyone was working with that person, like, oh my God. So seeing them happy is great, like, I really, really like that small scene at the end at the dinner table and with Barry and Iris just talking to her, saying how much they love her. It's going to be ripped away. Like, you can just tell. They keep on setting this up. Oh my god, I look forward to that breakup. Like, yeah, I don't know. But I really love Nora this season. I keep on having to emphasize that. I think she's great. And at the end of that scene, we see that they say the key to defeating Cicada is to wake up Grace, to stop her from actually being in that coma because he blames the Metas for actually putting Grace into that coma and that's the reason why he started killing people, that's the reason why he's still doing it because they were the ones 
that affected Grace and why Grace is in this coma. So if they save her, I don't think he will stop, but you know, it's a good chance and maybe that is the key way to defeat Cicada. I would say, I think Grace is gonna have powers, honestly. I think she's going to have that Metatech, whether it's inside of her or anything like that. But I think she's gonna be good. I don't think she's just gonna side with Cicada. I think she's gonna be against it when she wakes up eventually. And so the ending scene, we see that Cicada is flicking through like a journal or like a sketch pad where he's put photographs and newspaper clippings and things like that, where we see a page full of Cisco photos and Cisco articles. You know, we saw that before, I do believe, and he was trying to track him. And for now, we go to the next page and we see that Nora is in fact his next target. She's got, he's got excess articles everywhere so he's going to be coming back for excess. So that was a really nice ending scene. I really, really liked this episode. Let me know if you did in the comments below. I don't think it was like the best episode of the season, but I think it was very good. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later for tonight's trailer breakdown. The reverse flash is back. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later and goodbye.